My client does not deny the right of all men to expel their bodily gases. We are all much relieved. My client's case is that he has taken an elementary function and raised it to an art form. That his genius is being debased by a fraudulent imposter. That the art of petomania is being devalued, thus putting his own livelihood in extreme jeopardy. We request an examination of both parties by the court physician. Uh, I object. Surely you cannot ask this delicate flower of French womanhood raised in a convent, I may add, who has never so much as removed her outer garment in front of her own husband to submit to the indignity of the prying eyes of a complete stranger. I suggest that a demonstration in camera of their respective abilities should be sufficient for a man with such perspicacity and wit as your honor. The demonstration was given in the judge's chambers, after which he gave judgment. I have listened to the evidence with great interest and have been most entertained in the process by both sides. However, the case for Madame Thibault was somewhat weakened by the discovery of a concealed instrument. Exhibit A. <laughs> Silence in court. This instrument was cunningly concealed in the nether regions of the said artist and was played with a great deal of skill on her part. My personal favorite being a swarm of bees sucked up an elephant's trunk. <laughs> However, no such instrument having been found on the person of Monsieur Pujol, we must conclude that his performance was a la nature, which of course was the basis of his complaint. I therefore find in favor of Monsieur Pujol and against Madame Thibault, who will henceforth cease calling herself La Petomen. Pujol, completely vindicated, once again took his rightful position as the only genuine Petomen. But not at the Moulin Rouge. He opened his own theater, the Pompadour. For the final broadside, we need as many cannons as possible. All together now. Hello. 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 But alas, age was beginning to take its toll. For 30 years, he'd given of his best, but now his powers began to diminish. He was no longer a young man. Slowly at first, but noticeable to his vast army of fans, old favorites began to disappear. Some of his repertoire became too dangerous. Accidents began to happen. Favorite of mine, the ugly, repellent old toad. Ladies <laughs> and... Uh... Gentlemen, the Petamin regrets he is unable to continue his performance. You can get your money back at the box office. Why don't you retire, my dear? That's the third time this month it's happened. We have enough money. We could buy that biscuit factory we saw. It's in a lovely part of the country. Retire, leave the stage, no, madame, not while there is a breath of wind left in my body. This is a temporary affliction. I shall be as good as ever within a week. Pass me the charcoal biscuits, please. You can't go on forever. You've had a good run for your money. Very well, my dear. But just do one thing for me. Cut out the 21-gun salute. Mm. The doctor strongly advised against it. No, I can't do that. My public would never allow it. I am prepared to cut down on my performances. Henceforth, I shall only give matinees on Wednesday and Saturday. Events were about to overtake him. It was August 1914.
guns he had so often imitated became a terrifying reality. The competition was too much. Pujol realized this was no time for an act such as his. Europe was plunged into a bloodbath. France looked on in horror as the German advance reached the gates of Paris. He gave his farewell performance on September the 5th, 1914. And in conclusion, may I thank you all? Thank you all for your support over the years. Good luck and God bless you. Vive la France! Yes, as the British Foreign Secretary, Sir Edward Grey, rightly said a few weeks before, the lights were indeed going out all over Europe.